Okay, so <clears throat> up here is where your park two-way check valve goes. Um, more on this later. I'll do another video up front to show you that a little bit better. Down below that is where your primary and your secondary two-way check valves go. So I'm going to pull them down here a little bit. Set them on the tire so it's a little easier for me to show you what's going on with those. Okay, like any two-way check valve, um, you have input uh, on either side. And whichever input is greater uh, comes out the center port. So in the case of these guys, uh, these two sides on the left are tied together, or towards the rear of the vehicle, are tied together. Um, this is where the line goes up to your front uh, service um, glad hand on the, uh, on the front of the truck, the blue glad hand. So that's a uh, remote service air in from the glad hand, comes in, goes through both of these guys, and comes out these ports. The two outlet ports on the two-way check valves, these go down to your uh, to your brakes. One goes to your, your front brakes, one goes to your rear brakes, and uh, goes to the, the brake relays or quick-release valves and uh, activates the brakes when you apply air pressure um, from the front service glad hand. Or uh, from this other port. Now these other two ports, they have short little jumper valves, or jumper lines rather, that go from uh, their location here, where they're mounted, um, here and here, and they have short jumper lines that run over to the two middle ports here. So uh, in order to delete these valves, you follow the jumper line back to the port where it comes through the floor, and you disconnect that port. And then you disconnect this line, and you take that line, and you run it back over to the port coming out of the floor. That's what these two lines are. Um, let me see, one of these, yeah, these are your service line, air lines. These are your service air lines in that normally loop around the steering column. What I did was I, uh, these two lines are long enough coming off the valves um, to reach over and just connect right in. Uh, it just takes a couple minutes. Just got to pull the, uh, unscrew it off of, uh, Take the line off that's normally connected here, trace it back to its valve, take the center line off of that valve, and connect it back to the port you just took the, the jumper line off of. Do the same thing. Got this jumper line that runs down to here, to the other valve, disconnect it at this end, go back to its valve, pull the center line off of it, fold it up over there. So this loops around behind the, uh, behind the steering, just like the, uh, the primary and secondary input air lines do. So that's all there is to it, to take those guys out. Um, then you can take the, uh, the line that's normally connected on the, on the top of these, uh, this T and this elbow, this line, uh, you pull it out and go all the way back and pull the uh, glad hand off of the front as well. And, and that's it. Okay, so this end of your um, park two-way check valve, this end here connects over to the front glad hand. Now, I've stripped all of mine out, um, so it might be a little hard to show you, but uh, down here behind, you can see there's a, a mounting ring welded to the cross tube, and then there's a uh, zip tied underneath it is my check valve, because I kept that check valve assembly in place. And uh, just hooked the line to a uh, hooked the line to a regular fitting off the end of, off the end of the check valve, so I can still charge my system from here. I'll eventually delete all this, but I just left that in place because it was a quick fix. So um, mounted in that ring down there is this assembly. This is the part that mounts into the ring. It mounts like this. Um, that port on the two-way check valve has a hose that runs over and connects to this top port here. Um, goes down through the ring and then there's a T. That check valve that I've got zip tied down there, um, that check valve plugs onto this end of this T. This other end has a short jumper line that runs up into the back of your front glad hand, your emergency glad hand, which it, which attaches right here. Okay, so when you apply air through the glad hand, it goes down this jumper to the T, it can either go through the check valve to go back to the wet tank, which pressurizes the whole rest of the system, or it comes up through this elbow and goes over to apply park air through this, this two-way check valve. 
um, if you still want to keep the functionality of this front glad hand, um, you're going to have to take this whole assembly out, remove this fitting from the top. And the reason I say take it all the way out uh, is because you can't unscrew this fitting because there's not enough room to rotate it. I don't think there is anyway without contacting the front of the intercooler. So I had to actually take the whole fitting out. In order to take it out, you got to uh, you got to take check valve off of it. Um, you got to rotate the T a little bit. You got to get this fitting off of it. Then you can finish unscrewing the T because it's a little tight down in there. Um, but you got to be able to get this fitting unscrewed, and you can't turn a wrench on it underneath uh, without hitting the framework. So it's kind of a, a puzzle to disassemble um, to get this T unscrewed so that you can get this nut off and get this assembly out. To get this fitting out and put a plug in here. Once you put a plug in here, you can put it all back together and uh, reattach it, then the air will go from your glad hand right on down through this blocked off T here and go to the check valve and go back and pressurize the rest of your uh, your air system. Okay, so um, park air from the front emergency glad hand or park air from the floor um, pass-through port comes over to here and whichever one's applying air, the air goes through the, the two-way check valve and comes out the center um, into this T. Now on this T there's an elbow and that's your park air line going back to the uh, reversing valve to, to apply park air and release your parking brakes. The other side of this T has an adapter and there's a pressure switch screwed in here. Um, that's the pressure switch that turns, on, turns off your um, park brake and emergency brake lights in the instrument panel. So when you apply park air, this switch senses 50 or 66 PSI. Once it senses 66 PSI, its contacts open and the lights go out. Um, what I did was I basically just recreated this T where the park air port comes down through the floorboards of the truck. Now, with the grill off, this is really easy to see. Um, you have two quarter inch ports. Uh, it's hard to see that one back in there, but there's a, I've got a pipe plug in it right now. You can see the, the brass from the pipe plug. Um, that's the airline back to your, um, your trailer brake airline that goes back to the air brake protection valve and basically turns on the, the trailer air. Um, this other fitting is your park air. And so normally there'd be a little jumper line from there that runs over to one of these ports here. Uh, what I did was I put a T on it, comes down to a T, it comes out, and here's the uh, the pressure switch that controls the, the park and emergency brake lights. And the other port, that elbow, I took that elbow off of there and put it there, and this is your, now the park air line going back to, uh, all the way back to the anti-compounding valve to turn on the, um, or back to the reversing valve rather, to apply park air and tell the uh, anti-compounding valve to, uh, apply air to the spring brake air chambers and release your park brakes. Um, like I mentioned earlier, the other port here uh, goes back to a, uh, an air cutoff valve that cuts off air to um, your air operated hydraulic pump. So once you apply park air, you can't operate the um, air operated hydraulic pump. So keep somebody from tilting the cab while you're driving, I guess. Um, I deleted that because I'm going to an electric over hydraulic pump here eventually, so I just didn't bother hooking it back up. If you wanted that functionality, um, you would need another T here, um, or you would need to reuse, utilize this port on the bottom of the T, so you could have uh, both the park air line going back and the line going back to that cutoff valve. Um, so yeah, that, that would be the easy way to do it. You could just put this fitting right there and connect those two lines up right there. All the lines are long enough. I didn't have to cut any lines to do any of this job. Um, you have four big ports going in. These are your primary and secondary air going up. And the two center ports are your um, service air coming back down from the treadle valve to go to your brakes. Um, so it's, it's really easy to do. You don't have to cut any lines to do any of this. You could actually, I can put this all back in place in um, the front portion of it in about an hour or so maybe. Uh, it's, it's really easy to do. Um, the wiring is long enough to reach either this location or its original location, which was back over here somewhere. So um, pretty straightforward. Anyway, 